Hi, and welcome to the Imaginal Podcast. This is a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar, who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before it transforms. We too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. And here's your host, life coach and consultant, Lori Sauce, who goes most commonly by her nickname, Sauce. Hello, it's Sauce. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we're going to do something slightly different because life is a little bit crazy over here, but for really good reason. So I am actually moving across the country. I've lived my entire life in Southern California and I'm moving to the East Coast. And this whole adventure was actually born out of this podcast, believe it or not. So last fall, Rafaela Brown was on the podcast and she brought the question, what would your 90-year-old self say to you now? She brought that question into our circle, into the discussion, and she and I just riffed on that topic. And I was so moved by the conversation. And this one stayed with me like very few things ever have in my life. That question just wouldn't let me go. I just kept thinking about it. What would my 90-year-old self say to me now? And we only get this one life. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And one of those things was moving to the East Coast because I've always wanted to. My whole life, I've wanted to experience the seasons that occur on the East Coast of the United States. And so it was only a matter of weeks before I started planning my move. It took quite a bit of planning. (laughs) And unexpected things came up, so I'm setting out a little bit later than I originally planned to. But as of the day I'm recording, I'm actually leaving on Saturday, and I'm recording on a Tuesday. And so I am just (laughs) living amongst a lot of boxes and trying to do a lot of things uh, while also maintaining my client meetings and other things that I'm involved with professionally and personally and trying to say goodbye to some people before moving. And so the podcast is going to take just a slightly different form for just a little while. Today, what I wanted to do was bring a reprise back of that podcast that Rafaela and I released back in October of last year. Because I think that question is really worth revisiting. And it's actually come up in conversation with my friends, with my clients, with Rafaela. It seems that we return to that question often because it's such a great thing to think about. And it often prioritizes things or highlights our dreams or shows us our possibilities. And so I'm going to replay that episode today in connection with my intro here. And I would invite you to think, what would your 90-year-old self say to you now? And maybe that will encourage you to do something, or maybe it will affirm you for what you are doing. Maybe your 90-year-old self would have some advice for you. But I keep thinking I need to listen more often to my 90-year-old self. (laughs) And so I I think she's pretty cool. And I think for all of us, they're pretty cool people. So I will attach that here in just a moment. And then if you don't mind, I'm going to take you with me on my trip. I'm driving, as I said, from California to the East Coast. It's going to take a while because I need to work and also go to class and attend some other meetings simultaneously. So I'm sort of going to make my way across. But I figure since I'm doing this as a solo trip that I think a lot of things are going to come up because I'll have some space and some time and some beautiful scenery and some new experiences. And so I thought I would share tidbits of my journey, but also bring to you questions that might come from my life coaching brain to see if any of these things might be of value to you. So I am going to sign off here now because I've got so much to do. Oh my gosh. 
But I am so excited. I am beyond excited to start this trip. And I really want to thank you for being a part of this podcast because your feedback has also bolstered my excitement for life and for my ponderings about what's meaningful. And your shares and your listening has impacted me so deeply. So thank you. This podcast is totally changing my life, both because of the content and because of the people. So thank you so much. I wish you well. I'll come back next week when I'm on the road. And for now, I hope you have the best week. Oh, and if you're meeting Rafaela for the first time, she is one of my dearest friends and a colleague. Rafaela was my very first guest. She's a certified personal and leadership coach, and she helps women in leadership bring the best of who they are to their work and their personal lives. And in her first interview on this podcast, she shares her experience of overworking and of burnout and when she was trying to do it all. And that has informed much of her work now, and she is dedicated to help women in leadership learn how to ditch the idea of toxic productivity and show up at their best in both their careers and their personal life. And she's super cool. And she wanted me to tell you that she's doing well. She's going to be back on the podcast probably in the fall because she is spending time with her daughter who recently graduated from high school. Oh my gosh, they are going through the most beautiful things together as a family. And I'm sure she'll mention some of that when she returns. But for now, here is the episode that completely turned my life upside down for the better. What would your 90-year-old self say to you now? Here is my conversation with Rafaela. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Rafaela Brown. Hey, everyone. How's it going? One thing that I love about you, Rafaela, is that we always talk. We talk about whatever's going on in the moment. We always check in. And it might be that we come in with just the funniest stories, or it might be that there's something really heavy on our heart. And I really appreciate that you always check in. And I think one of the things that really means the most to me is that you are someone with whom I can really discuss the meaning of life. And I don't mean that to sound so trite, but in our space, I feel like I am reminded of living a life that is really meaningful. And so as we start this discussion today, I just want to invite you who's listening into this space. We're going to probably joke around. We're going to riff and who knows what Raphael is going to pop off. But <laughs> <laughs> today we're going to zoom out and zoom in enough to really think about these lives that we get to live. And are we living them today in the ways that we really want to. And so, Ralph, why don't you take it from here? Yeah. And thank you for that. Yeah, I always enjoy our chat. So thank you, Zach. Yeah. So we were talking about and really reflecting on, you know, like our older self, you know, and so <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, I well, am, I'm like, I kind of have my older self. Already. Right. And I'm like, well, I am <laughs> middle age. So so, but I'm just like, um, you don't look middle aged. That's for you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Same for you. Yes. Um, <laughs> but if we were to go a little bit more ways out. Yes. You know, yes. And so here's the question we wanted to share with all of you. So, you know, take a moment and, and listen and really like dive in. So let's say, think about if, you know, you are 90 years old. And you're sitting in your rocking chair or maybe as a 90 year old, I don't know, you're out and enjoying life, <laughs> but you're 90 years old and you're taking a moment to reflect and you are so happy and pleased with the wonderful life that you've been blessed with and that you've lived so far and looking back at your life. And all that be you, that you've accomplished, achieved, and acquired, and in all the relationships that you've developed, what matters to you the most? Yeah, what what sticks out the most for you? I love this question so much. 
Me too. Oh, gosh. It puts things into perspective, too. It just makes all of the racket quiet down. I, I think about some of the things that I'm worried about and needlessly worried about. If I'm 90, I'm not Remember that time you were like super stressed out about whether or not you were going to get four things done before five o'clock? <laughs> right, right. And this this question makes made me think about the fact that, and actually I often think about it, but how time goes, right? Like it, it just, it's moving so fast. Like when you think, when I think about this year, I'm like, we're already in October. Like, are I, you kidding me? No, I think it's 2020 still. Like when did the years even pass by? It's right. It's going to be 2023. I'm, I'm stating the obvious, but no. No, uh, but. Yes. The fact that it's going to be 2023 and that we're like, yeah, close to it. It's just, you know, it's. It, it, it's a lot. And so to take a moment and reflect on your life, you know, when I think about this question, a, what matters the most, what came to me first was the relationships and connections that I made with people. 100. I definitely would have wanted, and I'm if I'm speaking from my like 90 year old self, you know, I would have wanted and hoping at that time that I'm still living it out, but to, to love, like to, to, to give love. Yes. To be open, to receive love. Yeah. And to be like an easy person to love. Oh, you, and you, oh my gosh, you are the, oh, (laughs) you, I I don't know how you couldn't be. (laughs) You're so sweet. No, seriously. (laughs) I was just joking with Rafaela a little bit ago today. We first were in a Zoom meeting and it it was a group coaching program, actually. Uh, We've mentioned it before in previous episodes. And I'm over here like like DMing Rafaela in the chat because I was like, that person is so cool. I'm not letting this go by. And so I'm like, hey, you know, I goes. You are so lovable and it's your, who you are is so evident. It is so like apparent because you can't be anything but who you are. And oh my gosh, you are the best person. So I don't know, Raffaella, when you think about that 90, when love comes to mind, are there things for you that can distract you from that? Because I see your life so full of love. Mm, That's a good question. I think sometimes in what I think about in a relationship, uh, so not like, you know, friendships and business relationships and all that, you know, and connecting with people, networking, that's not a problem. But when it comes to like, you know, personal, intimate, you know, that could lead to whatever, long-term committed marriage type. The first thing that comes to mind, like what's getting in the way could be fear. Because when you... I know for me, when I make like a real great connection to someone Mm -hmm. and things are going well, it's fun. I don't want it to go sour. And so I have a fear of ending. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Isn't it interesting that we can push aside or, or just be a little bit tentative when it comes to the things that maybe we want the most. So if you were 90 and you were going to talk to yourself right now or in any of those times, those thresholds where you feel like the possibility of love is there, what would 90-year-old Rafaela say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just picture her like, <laughs> I can already picture her. She's a riot. She's hilarious. <laughs> she is a, she's a riot. <laughs> she is hilarious. Uh, but 90 year old me would definitely encourage me to be open to the experience. Don't shut out love. 90 year old me would also say, don't be nobody's fool either. <laughs> Good. Real sassy. Good advice. Yeah. Right. But definitely like the only way to, to learn and grow is to be able to, you know, 
experience it at times. So especially when it comes to love. So yes, be immersed in it, be present with it, pay attention to what works for you and what what's not communicate it. And if it's off and not a fit, it's okay. You know, you, you tried. Yes. But oh. don't shun it before it even happens, you know? Yes. So this reminds me of a conversation that I had with a very close friend of mine and the same person who I was talking about in a previous episode when I was talking about visiting New Hampshire and going miniature golfing. And we were talking about love. And I'm I'm not in a relationship at the moment. I think I've spoken briefly about going through a divorce a, a bit ago. And so this right now isn't my present, but we were talking about love. And this could be a partnership or this could be a friendship or this could be an animal. It really could be anything. But we were saying, you know, the adage of like, would you love even though you risk losing? Because at times things don't work out or there's a parting or something. Often, you know, love comes with a loss at some point, whether chosen or not. And we said, would you risk it even though you knew you might lose? It? Mm. And the only answer we had was every time, yes, I would risk it. Wow. Because when I'm 90, I'm picturing myself when you're setting this scenario and I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking of myself on the rocking chair or in the club, wherever I, wherever I am. I love in the club. <laughs> what comes to mind for me too are relationships. Relationships and moments created with those people whom I love. Because that's those are the things that engrave with such color and such meaning and and what I really carry in my heart, like what, what I actually just feel in my body, right? Like that's so much more meaningful. And that's, those are the things I dwell on. Those are the things that in my, after the fact, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still reliving it. And it, you just feel it. It's what life is to me too. And, and so, you know, I, I wonder about why am I so worried about proofreading this document or something? something i i'm not saying we don't proofread documents but <laughs> the amount of stress i let these things occupy in my head or the amount of toil that i go over certain things for not that uh, of course we have responsibilities we're not saying any of that stuff but too often i can forget to create the moments with those i love or or be so amidst and mindful of these relationships and nurturing them and finding those spaces of time. And it's interesting, right? Because I think both of us value that. And, and I, I, I mean, would you say that you do that, create these moments and live that way, you know? Yeah. Like I'm listening to you as you're talking about it and, you know, I wish you guys could see her face. Like it was just like the like the most serene and loving, like being in that moment type of smile talking about it. But I, I agree with you a thousand percent, like being present, creating those experiences. Like when you think about your life, even, you know, from childhood, you remember those moments, those experiences that you enjoyed, even the not so good one, but you just remember those moments. And so it made me think about like, what are the the moments that I, I want or the experiences that I want to to have, you know, and it definitely made me think about my daughter who's in her senior year of high school. <sighs> so yeah. it's it's like I want to have create these moments with her before she heads off to wherever she's going. Right. Yeah. Yes. I, <laughs> I have such a special place in my heart for your daughter and and the two of you and your relationship. And Kat Jackson was recently on the podcast and her daughter's a bit younger. And she talks about the moments that she creates for her daughter. She talked about it in her episode. And yes, when we pair that with the idea of time that you were mentioning a little bit ago mm -hmm. and how this year so special, there's nothing like senior year. And if you're not in the United States by chance, this is 
the last year before university or before college for us. It's about like 17, 18, right, that age. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of special events that they have at our schools here. And yeah. so, yeah, and what a momentous time, right? It is. So, so again, I agree with you. Creating moments, bring, being present in the moment. And while it's, it's, it's fun to, you know, acquire things, you know, shop and, and get material things and things you like. But I'm just thinking about how so much more important for me, it's like to, to have something to do mm -hmm. that helps me connect, whether it's with her, whether it's like, we'll just watch TV. That's a moment in her room, sitting on her bed, talking. That's a moment, even though she might roll her eyes or something like, Oh, why are you here? <laughs> normal, normal, normal teens. I feel like the very much like the creeper with her, very much like a creep. <laughs> you, and you could, you are like the least creep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that I, I agree with what you're saying so much. The other thing that comes to mind looking back, if, you know, 90 year old looking back on my life, I think about. And this might sound cliche, but like, what, what impact did I have? You know, I want to be able to talk about like the mark that I left, not in some like prideful, pompous way, like, oh, and I did this and I achieved this and I, <laughs> not like this. <laughs> Is that your LinkedIn voice? <laughs> <laughs> That's my LinkedIn pompous voice of everything that I've done so well. No, um, no, no. Shame on LinkedIn, but we had that joke about the serious <laughs> voice from <laughs> previous episodes. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But it's, it's more of, and again, I guess it goes right back into connection, right? So whoever I meet with whatever we're doing, uh, whether it's for uh, with the work that I do and coaching a client and being present in that moment, whether it's at an event and happen to connect and talk to someone, whether I'm doing community service or support in, whether I'm giving, I just want to make sure that I'm having an impact somewhere. So mm -hmm. I enjoy being of service, helping and supporting others. So you just never know the smallest thing that you might do, how it helps someone's life. Even totally. like literally like saying hi to someone who, and I'll just use this as a quick example, like someone who's homeless on the street all day, they're, they're ignored, you know? So being able to stop and, and talk to someone sitting there, you don't know what impact, how that would motivate or make them feel. So if not for one reason or not or another easily it could be me who was unhoused i mean that that is so true and i think showing up for each other is so it's it's so it's invaluable really and when you were talking there were a couple of ideas that came to my mind and one was something i think i might share this real quick these two one had to do with my dad and one had to do with my mom two things that they did or said that were so life changing for me. And if it wasn't for these moments with them, I, I wouldn't have learned them, you know? And so, uh, so I would say it's along these same lines of making an impact or showing up. And my dad, when I was in my 20s, oh gosh, I was in my 20s or my 30s. I don't know. It doesn't matter because now I'm in my 90s <laughs> on a rocking chair. <laughs> So I this is you're not actually in your 90s but for reflection purposes yes, you are. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I was going through a really bad breakup and I was so sad. Gosh, I don't even know if I said this in the podcast before, but here goes anyways. I was so sad. I was it was before cell phones and I was in my house or apartment or wherever I was living, and I was just so down that I wasn't answering the phone. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. I was just really in deep grief. And 
my dad, I guess, was calling me all day. And I don't know if I turned the ringer off or I was ignoring it. I, whatever it was, I just, I was in my own feeling of, of real darkness. And, and, you know, that's sometimes what happens when you're bereft. And when, when you, and when your life goes differently than you thought it would. And I, I knew I would get out of it. But at the time, I was just so sad. I was so sad. And at one point, there's a knock at the door. And I had no choice but to open the door. Because <laughs> I think there was, a, you know, he's probably knocking or ringing more than once. And so, so I opened the door. And there's my dad. And he said, you weren't answering your phone. And I said, no, I know. And so he took it upon himself to drive over to my house. And he was holding this little tiny cooler. And in it, there were two drinks. And after he said what he said, you weren't answering your phone. He didn't say anything else. He just came in. He opened this little cooler. And there were those two drinks inside. And at that time... I was drinking Diet Coke, which I think we thought was healthy. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, did. <laughs> yeah, like diet soda. It's healthy. Yes, I'm having yeah. a Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah. And that was my favorite drink. And he liked Pepsi regular. And so he just opened the cooler. There's his drink and my drink. He reaches in, he gets the, co the Diet Coke for me and he hands it to me. He sits down on the couch next to me and we're both staring to, towards the wall in front of us. And he takes his Pepsi and he pops it open and he says nothing. And I open my drink and we just sit there for I don't know how many hours saying nothing, but sitting there together. And that, I think, is one of the most healing acts that anyone has ever shown to me, just showing up and not not trying to tell me what I needed to do or what anything. He just sat there with me in an act of like compassion and generosity. And I will just never forget it. And later in, later on in his life, he would say, love is about showing up. And I didn't realize, you know, how often he did that just in acts all the time. And that informed me so much. And my mom, I said this in, in one of the episodes already, but it's a good companion piece. When she was dying and she knew she didn't have too much longer because she had cancer and she was in hospice, she said, she just pulled me over to her bed and she said, I just want you to know, if you have something nice to say about somebody, say it right away because you never know when you won't have the chance. Mm -hmm. okay. And... I know that I am the sap monster. I am like, just like one ball of sap. No, these are really you know? powerful stories. But yeah, no, I think one of the reasons why I gush is because of what she told me that time. That moment, I was so sad. Of her. I was, it was just a lot of anticipatory grief. And what she said, I was drinking in. And that changed me, you know? I just thought from now on, I'm going to say stuff because, because love, love. I mean, that's what, what we do. Like, and that's what matters. When you were talking about love, you know, I, I suddenly started dialing into these two stories and also just what matters to me as a 90 year old. And I really want to thank you, Rafaela, for this question because before this conversation right now, I was feeling pretty bogged down by the amount of work that I have to do today. Oh, Lord. Same here. Yeah. And I still have to do it, you know, but it feels different now. It does. And thank you for sharing that. Uh, it definitely made me think about another point or maybe like the same point in reflecting on your life and, and what's like important. The other thing is to, so this is going to sound cliche and maybe cheesy, but to live your life mm. and so, and not live a life that you think someone wants you to live or you're supposed to, or what society says, oh. it really made me think about uh, 
you know, the point, and I shared this in like one of our, probably our earlier episodes, but you know, you, for me, I, I did the, the cookie cutter path, you know, high school yeah. to college and college. I was like, yay, graduate, get a job. I was like, oh, not enough money. Go to grad school. You'll make more money. You know, <laughs> everything that in the system and <laughs> that they tell you to do and you do it and okay, now you make some more money and you work and you work. And not that those jobs weren't fulfilling because they they were to a point. But my point is that I definitely used to like define myself or being successful by climbing the the ladder, you know, of my career. Yeah. Until I got to a point, which, you know, now I'm grateful for it, where it was a job that really went against all my values. And I was like, oh, this is not going to be my life. Like, I'm not going to work like a dog. Like, you're not going to have me just up all hours working and not have a child. And at that time, Gabby was like seven or eight. And so it put it into perspective because I was being pushed so hard and like, and it was going against everything. It became clear. No, my value is like, I get a ch- I get to create and do work that I enjoy. I don't have to just take a job any job and just stick with it for the rest of my life. I get to be I like I can create something. Yes. Oh yes. And not feel stuck. And that was the most freeing thing, like one of the most freeing things I've ever experienced because it felt like I broke out of the box of like what they say how you should go towards achievement and 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 work and live life. Like I did that, I think it was like 34, 35. And I was like, nope. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm driving right off the path. I'm not going in that direction. And it was the best decision to actually walk into something which was unknown. So mm-hmm. taking major courageous risks and creating something that I had no clue what it would be like, you know, this coaching and consulting business. And yeah, it, it's been like the best decision, not easiest decision, even along the way, not easy, but just like the absolute best thing for my life because I'm not so afraid of yeah. the unknown. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I wish you could see Raffaella right now too. You know, it's cool because you said, I'm driving right off the, you know, you're not in that, it broke out. You're not in that same cookie cutter. Not, we love cookies. I'm not saying we don't love cookies. (laughs) And I love chocolate chip cookies, but I digress. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we should maybe, okay, never mind. I was about to really go off the path. We we were really going to go on the sand. So yeah. we're bringing it back. Bring we're it helping back. each bring other it bring it back. Okay. But when you said I broke out of this box and how you didn't know what it was going to be, but you were creating it. What I think is so cool is it does take a little bit of creativity to make something new. And it takes permission. It ha- you, When you realize that you don't have to subscribe to this particular structure, but Knowing that you choose your own life. And what's so beautiful is that now you have that time to spend with your daughter. And it's cool full circle because you were just talking about her and spending time with her. And you've mm-hmm. created that life so that, you know, when you're 90 and, and you're sassy and beautiful and funny and a riot, like you'll be like, oh, I'm so glad I made that decision. Like... Yeah, like I'm sitting here and I'm, my mouth is just like, yeah, like I would, that would be one of the most powerful, mo- powerful moments that I would look back on like, ooh, like, girl, you were, you took a risk. Yeah, yeah, yes. But if I can tell you something too, and I'll just add it here. And I'm, I said it before, it's also like my faith, you know, like I just, I just believe 
I just really believe in this, like, stuff is going to work out for my good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I I think we want to not be resigned to something where we feel disempowered or we feel like you said someone else is making decisions for our life or whoever they are that said you have to do this. Right. 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 Um, but to know in your inner self what's best for you and what matters to you because time passes and time is also beautiful and time is also ours to have and enjoy and be a part of. And we can create these times and these moments and these relationships through these choices. Some things are out of our choice, but right. a lot actually is within our choice and we have the illusion that it isn't. Well, we are so glad you're with us, Rafaela. Gosh, <laughs> picturing us podcasting when we're 90. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that, will, um, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what the media is going to be at that time? Like if there won't be podcasts, who knows? It's going to be some like three dimensional. Who knows what it's going to be? I know. You know, if we talk to my avatar or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be like, you'll be 90 and I'll be 100. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be in the club <laughs> in the metaverse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't put it past. Don't put it past us. Don't put it past us. We love music. We love dancing. We love, you know. <laughs> okay. Where can people find you? You can find me on, at my website, rafaelabrown.com, uh, as well as on Instagram in my stories so you can see what I'm up to. Uh, and again, hey. that's Rafaela <laughs> Brown. LinkedIn. And, LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, because <laughs> that's my professional page. And you can find me there at Rafaela Brown. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love LinkedIn. I don't use it as much as I want to, but. I am also on LinkedIn. I'm not there as much as I want to. L O R I S A S E. I'm on Instagram at Lori Sase, spelled the same L O R I S A S E. Or my website, lorisase.com. Sign up for my newsletter. I actually don't send out that many newsletters, but I send them out whenever I have something hot on the heart or something like that. So I would love to connect with you there. Yes, and have the best week. Think about what your 90 year old self would say to you. Yes. Right. And feel free to share with us too. Oh, we love, we love, oh my gosh. Tag us in your stories. We'll repost. If you have like 90 year old thoughts or a hundred year old thoughts in the club, <laughs> it's just, yes. Tag, tag us and share with us. We yes. love to hear your, your feedback. Yeah. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>